Hey friends, if you're new to the channel, you'll have seen that I'm trying out the digital nomad life, first in Malta and now in Lisbon in Portugal. And it wouldn't be me if I went to an amazing place and didn't check out all of the rich culture, heritage, activities and experiences that I could do while I'm there. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the amazing activities and experiences and places that I went to in and around Lisbon and those that I'd recommend you to check out whether you're a digital nomad or a tourist. And if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below because there's plenty more content about Lisbon and digital nomad life to come. So the first experience that I would absolutely recommend is a must do, is doing a Jeep tour or Jeep safari or some kind of tour in and around Sintra. So me, my friend Mike, Jack and Joe, basically booked this experience. I found it on Airbnb Experiences and we set off on this Jeep tour. And it's fair to say the scenery surrounding this tour was absolutely stunning. We went across the coast, through some incredible beaches, across natural parks, through some quaint little towns, up some kind of like off-road tracks and some like hills. And one place we went to which was absolutely outstanding was the Quinta da Regalera Palace which is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This was an incredible, incredible place on the tour. But to give some context, it was actually owned by a really rich Brazilian Portuguese miner who back in the day built it. And pretty much the best way to describe it is he allowed his imagination to go absolutely wild. There are like these wells, like this initiation well that was used for these like secret initiation rituals these like deep caverns leading to like other unfinished wells. Honestly, the place and the architecture was just like insane. It was just like this man just almost built his like Harry Potter castle <laughs> with all the caverns and wells and things that he wanted to, but in real life. And there's apparently some like links to the masons and some rituals as well, who apparently regard the place and the wells and all the rituals that went on as a kind of like mason temple. Um, or as like a really spiritual place for masons to go. Apparently that's true. So yeah, we spent a good amount of time at the palace, driving around, going along the coastal roads and checking out all the wonderful scenery and our driver Mario, uh, like named after like Super Mario, um, took us to some really wonderful spots in the actual Jeep too. And actually one of the funniest highlights of that day and definitely why I think this experience was super memorable in addition to in the incredible scenery and sights we saw on the Jeep, was that the place we went to lunch was this really, really quaint local place and it was like 15 euros all you can eat food. And this is proper local, proper all you can eat. <laughs> so me and the lads literally just got like plates and plates of like meat and fish and they were bringing some chips and some like potato wedges and things like that. But we were like, no, 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 no. We're not gonna fill up on any carbs. We're just gonna go all out on the meat. And that was an incredible place for 15 euros for food and wine meat and fish, and they even had these really incredible like Oreo and caramel mousses, of which we had about five each. Um, so that's a really amazing place. Super awesome day, going around Sintra, visiting the highlights, and I would definitely recommend checking out the experience that I did. I'll put a link to the Airbnb listing because it was so, so good, and I would recommend taking just a full day trip to go in and around Sintra and visit all those locations. And the next experience I would recommend if you want to do something a little more active in the sense of like you want to do some kind of like outdoor sport was like an all natural experience adventure all packed into one day. So yeah, in, in, in this really, really jam packed day, we got up to some amazing things like kayaking along the coast. We got to do like cliff jumping. So like jumping in the water from some quite big heights. <laughs> we got to go like exploring through the like caves and like basically kayaking through all these different caves. We got to do some snorkeling, so there were some really nice sights of underwater footage that you'll be seeing now. And we finished up with a super chill evening with some awesome views on this guy's like farm. <laughs> uh, so he just has like this farm in Portugal and we just ended up having some really chilled drinks and food there to round up the rest of the day. So super good day, super adventurous. Uh, and super like jam-packed with outdoor activities. Just make sure that the weather is good. That's the only thing I'd say. The next activity that I wanted to do was something that was a little bit more like food-based. So Mike and I tried to do like a tastings tour of Lisbon, 
100% you've got to check out the amazing places you can get some homemade pasta donatas. Um, but yeah, we wanted to try out like a full tasting tour of Lisbon. It actually didn't happen in the end because I booked it quite late and they didn't assign a guide. So we kind of did like our own mini self-care day sort of tasting tour. So we basically had this incredible breakfast and I would definitely recommend if you're in Lisbon checking out the like acai berry. Um, you can tend to get like these acai berry bowls which are really really delicious. Then we went to this spa and then we had sushi of all kind of meals for lunch. So that was a day where we just sort of took more of a self-care day. So I would recommend doing some kind of food-based activity. I don't necessarily have one to recommend but I would recommend checking it out because I think that's a really good way of visiting the city and actually checking out the local culture and you know you have some really tasty food so can't complain too much right if you want to do something a little bit different and you only have like a couple of hours and you want like a walking tour of going around Lisbon but you don't necessarily want to see all the main sites and you want to get more of an insight from like a local person who's lived here for a long time we did some really cool thing called this Lisboa love walking tour so this very much consists of going around like the back streets and alleys and um, seeing some kind of really nice architecture of the local buildings and kind of getting an insight like behind the curtain of what it was actually like, you know, being living in Lisbon, what Portugal's kind of been like as a place over the past like 50 to 100 years and the history that kind of led to Portugal as it is today and how it's ahead in nations in some regards like health but like you know behind in some other regards that was that was really interesting you won't necessarily see the local sites so if you want to see the main like attractions or things like that you can probably do that yourself if you want something a little bit of an alternative that's what we did and it was quite an interesting different way of seeing the highlights of Lisbon that you wouldn't necessarily have expected to see if you just went on TripAdvisor and searched like the top 10 places to go or something in Lisbon. If you want to do an outdoor experience but you don't necessarily want to do it for a whole day and you just want to try out kayaking for like a couple of hours, one thing I did was like a kayak tour at Oreas Marina, I'm probably butchering the name, um, but I'll link the, the one I did in the description. So basically I went kayaking and paddling along the coast, really kind of like tranquil waters, like really easy kayaking. It wasn't like I was going up against six foot waves or anything like that. Um, just seeing some beautiful fortresses, going through some really cute like, um, like bay bits, stopping on the beach for a snack and just like really like nice and kind of fairly short and it was about two hours time kayaking along the water which made the whole thing super easy and super enjoyable to do. That's a good recommendation if you want to do something a bit shorter than the full outdoor nature adventure that I did. One other like boat water based activity that I would recommend doing that wasn't intense by any means at all and was quite romantic if you want something to, to do on a date or with someone while you're in Lisbon is Jack and I, my friend uh, who came to stay for a few days we went on this like sunset boat tour across the Tagus River. So it was like a two or three hour tour, less informational, and more just like really amazing scenery and obviously the sunset, seeing that go down over the Tagus River, like behind the bridge was absolutely stunning. Um, I don't even think the footage does it justice, but it was so beautiful. Um, and they even gave you like some wine and some like snacks and things as well, just to make the experience that a little bit better. Um, so that was really beautiful and highly recommend doing that one evening, particularly if the weather is good um, and you want to do something outside. In winter it will probably get a little bit chilly, <laughs> uh, so we were on the catamaran and it was definitely getting a little bit chilly by the end and this was in like, like what, October, November time, so if you did it anything later than that, then yeah, you probably want to take like a coat uh, because I think Jack and I were getting a bit cold by the end. but really nice experience and yeah just some beautiful views of the sunset from a place that i don't think we could have had a better spot on an actual catamaran in the middle of the river uh, at sunset so that was stunning yeah easy <laughs> yeah you're definitely more stable than me <laughs> and the last activity or experience that i'd recommend checking out is like heading to a rooftop bar and watching the sunset go down is another beautiful place to do that 
I'll link in the description the exact rooftop bar that I went to. But one evening I just met up with some other Google employees who happened to be in Lisbon at the time. Don't know what it is about Lisbon, but it's just bringing everyone, everyone to it at the moment. It's got quite a good tech scene, perhaps that's why. And so yeah, one evening just met up with some Google employees from the Dutch team actually. Got some drinks, got some snacks, went to Time Out Market, which is a really good place with tons of different local cuisines and different foods that you can get and wrapped up the day wonderfully there and also wrapped up this video on all the different activities and experience that I would recommend. If you found this video interesting, check out this one here, which is a playlist with all of my different Lisbon, Portugal and digital nomad content within it. And also check out this video here, which is a day in my life of living and working in Lisbon as a Google employee. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.